This video is part of a series of videos designed to solve real world IT problems using AWS. Please subscribe to the channel so that you get notified when a new video is uploaded. In this video, we are going to learn about the AWS serverless services. For running a web application, you need a EC2 instance on which your application will be running. To store your customer data, you need a database. And if your application is being used by thousands of customers, then you will need a load balancer. You will also need a auto scaling group, which will automatically increase and decrease the number of EC2 instances. But the main problem is these machines are always running and there is a hourly cost associated with these services. So you still have to pay even if nobody is using your application. And definitely that will increase your AWS bill. So what can we do about this? Is there any way we can reduce our cost and only pay when our application is actually used by the customer? And if nobody is using our application, then our bill should be zero. So that's where the AWS serverless services comes into picture. If I have to re-architect the previous solution, then instead of using a EC2 instance, I will use a AWS Lambda service. AWS Lambda only charges when your code is executed and it will only charge you for the number of milliseconds for which the code was running. If your code is not getting executed, then there is no cost. Similarly, you can replace your RDS service with either a DynamoDB database or you can use the AWS Aurora database. Similarly, you can replace your application load balancer with a API gateway. And you don't even have to worry about scaling because AWS manages the scaling of each of these services. If the number of customers are increasing, then AWS will automatically increase the number of Lambda execution. From a cost perspective, there is no per hour running cost and you only pay for the amount of time your services are being used. Also, when we say serverless, it doesn't mean that there are no servers. It means that you as a user or a developer don't have to worry about managing the servers. AWS is going to manage the servers for you. So after understanding all this, I don't see a reason why we shouldn't, we shouldn't be dancing. So let's move on and do a hands-on session on these services and get a better understanding on how to actually use. Let's create a DynamoDB table first. So in the AWS console, in the search bar, type DynamoDB and you will reach this dashboard. On this dashboard, you will see a create table button. If you have worked in a traditional relational database, normally you will have to create a database first and then you will have to create the tables. But, then, but since DynamoDB is serverless, we are directly creating a table over here. The name of the table should be user table. Don't change the name. And you have to specify a partition key. This is a sort of a unique key. So give the key as user and ID. Follow the same name that I am giving. And let's create the table. It will take a minute or so for the table to create it. The next step will be to create the Lambda function. But before creating the Lambda function, we need to create a IAM role. In the search bar, type IAM and open in a new tab. In the IAM dashboard, go to the role section and we will have to create a new role. This role is for a Lambda service to 
access dynamo db so we will specify here dynamo db search for it and you have to select two policies dynamo db full access and lambda dynamo db execution rules click on next click give the role a name lambda dynamo db and create this role now we will use this role within our aws lambda now in the search bar search for lambda and open the lambda service in a new tab in the lambda tab we will create a new function we will author from scratch and give this function a name lambda and dynamo db we are going to use the python runtime and in the default execution role we will use an existing role and we will select the role that we have just created and create the function this lambda function will need a code that we want to execute so i have created a python script and it is present in my github repository and i will share the link in the description section of the video there is a file called as lambda.py and we will copy the file as it is what this script what this code is doing is it is connecting to a dynamo db table with the name of user hyphen table and it is reading some input data and inserting the data into the table and if everything is successful it will return a response saying operation executed successfully we have copied the content and we will go into the lambda screen we will remove all of the content and we will paste the code as it is the important step is to deploy this function we will let this code to be deployed and the next step that we will do is we will create a api so search for api gateway in your search console and open this in a new tab in this tab we are going to create a new api we will select the option as rest api if you are a developer then you should understand what is a rest api i will not go into the details of it but i will just say okay over here select rest over here and we are going to create a new api give this api a name as hyphen api and let's create this api a rest api normally contains four different methods we will create a method called as post a post is mostly used for inserting or creating records in a database and there are other operations like get put and delete we will select the post operation over here and say okay we will also use a lambda proxy integration and we have to specify the lambda that we are going to trigger when this method is being invoked i will select this and i will click on save also one thing that we need to do is we need go to actions and enable cors cors is a little advanced concept what it means is cross origin request so but we will just enable this let it complete and then we are going to deploy our api so this step is complete we will go to the action section we will click on post here yeah so we have post method and we have got a options method now go to the actions drop down and click on deploy api so now we we have created a api with two methods post and options now we are going to deploy this api we have to specify the stage on which want to deploy so we will give the stage name as dev and click on deploy so this api got deployed and this is the url of the api which we can trigger from our ui so copy this link and now we will open a http ui so for that i already have a link specified over here i will paste this link in the description section of the video open this link into a new tab and you will see a page like this you don't have to make any changes over here just open this link and you have to specify the url of your api gateway and you have to fill in some details like what is my user id what is the username and the email id 
and this data should flow from the browser to your API gateway, then to your Lambda, and the data will be saved in the DynamoDB table. And we are going to verify that. So let me copy the URL again. Paste this URL over here. Give a user ID something like one. Give a name like test user. Give a email like ta or something dot com, and click on the submit button. If everything has been configured correctly, then we will get get a message like this: operation executed successfully. Click on OK, and let's go into our DynamoDB table and verify whether the data was actually inserted. So I will select my table from here. I will go to the explore table items, and we should be able to see the data that we inserted. So I inserted user ID one. Gave this is my email, and this is the user. We will try it one more time. We will go again back to our UI. We will give user ID two, test user two, and we will give some different email ID. Click on submit. It got successfully executed. Go back to the table again and refresh this page, and you should be able to see two entries in your DynamoDB table. So this was the entire exercise. The last thing that you should do is clean up the resources that you have created. So I will just follow just follow the UI pages and try to clean up your DynamoDB table, delete your Lambda function, and delete your API. So that's all about this project. And please ensure that you subscribe and like this video. Thanks a lot for watching.